It's early 2010, Michael Schumacher is putting his helmet on and getting ready to complete his first test of the season. He slides into his car, the mechanics tightly secure his seatbelts, the engine roars as it comes to life, that beautiful sound of the V8 GP2 engine. Wait, what? A GP2 engine? Not the engine Fernando Alonso raced with at McLaren, a real GP2 engine. What's a seven time world champion doing in a GP2 car? And how did he do? Surely he destroyed a few lap records. And if this car's good enough for the great Michael Schumacher, why haven't other world champions in a similar situation followed his lead? Stay tuned. We all know Michael Schumacher's most famous for his career at Ferrari, winning titles, breaking records, and destroying the field in nearly every wet race he drove in. He retired from Formula 1 at the end of the 2006 season, still pretty much at the top of his game, but there was a changing of the guard at the time. The next generation was starting to shine through, with a young Fernando Alonso winning back-to-back -back titles in his Renault and Kimi Raikkonen impressing in his McLaren. Two drivers who also had similar retirement journeys, which I'll touch on later. But for now, four years after Schumacher's retirement and he's back. Not in red though, this time in grey, having signed a three-year contract with Mercedes. This news got a lot of people excited, with respected media outlets and drivers all predicting that his return would be a success. I think Michael will be quick straight off. You know, he's not silly, he's not going to arrive and build up to it. He'll be ready for the first race and we can't forget that. A former teammate of Schumacher's did raise his concerns though. We'll cover that later on in the video. But what the three-time race winner raised did have a big impact. But first, Schumacher needs to prepare for his Formula 1 return. Schumacher signed in December of 2009, so that didn't give him much time to get 100% ready, especially as there's a new rule in F1 that negatively impacts his preparation. The rule wasn't there during Schumacher's first career. One of the reasons his contract was signed so late in the year was because Mercedes had only purchased the Braun team the month before. Braun didn't have any drivers signed for the following year, so Mercedes were free to look around. Schumacher was on the radar, but he was struggling with a niggling neck injury at the time. Formula 1 drivers are adrenaline junkies. Away from the sport, they usually fill their time with other activities that get the blood pumping. Since Schumacher's retirement, he's dabbled with motorbike racing, taking part in a few superbike races back in Germany. As is a norm with bike races, you tend to have it off every now and again. Unfortunately for Schumacher, one of these accidents resulted in a fractured neck. This injury stopped Schumacher from filling in for the injured Felipe Massa during the 2009 season. Testing a two-year-old Ferrari confirmed that his neck wasn't up for the g-forces that comes with driving these epic cars. Mercedes wanted to make sure that the doctors gave Schumacher the all clear before they offered him a contract. A very early Christmas present, I'd like to introduce Michael Schumacher. With the neck healed and the contract signed, Schumacher had to only wait two months until pre-season testing got underway on the 1st of February. And that's where the idea came along for Schumacher to take part in a three-day GP2 test. The test was mainly a development test for the future GP2 car, but with Schumacher assisting, he also benefited by getting race fit and sharpening his senses. The type of fitness you can't really train in the gym. Ross Braun, the team principal of Mercedes, explaining that GP2 cars are only 1G less than F1 at the time. With that amount of G-force, the test further confirmed that Schumacher's neck had fully healed. We have two purposes. One is to get as many kilometers as possible for myself in order to, to get, in, get back into the rhythm of uh, driving a, a single-seater. And the second priority is to get to know the engineers and get to work together in order to understand uh, on my side, the engineers, how they work and the opposite, uh, how do I work. The first two days of the test were held in mixed conditions, but luckily the sun was out for the third. With Mercedes engineers there to further speed up the get to know you stage, Schumacher completed a full race distance. Even with not ideal track conditions and a harder tyre compound, Schumacher set a fastest lap time just four tenths off the GP2 lap record. Everything was looking good for Schumacher's return, and this was confirmation to many that it would be a success. So, if this test was a good idea, then why haven't other drivers used a GP2 or Formula 2 car in their return to the sport? Both Fernando Alonso and Kimi Raikkonen had time away from F1 and came back. The two world champions each having two seasons away. Kimi missing 2010 and 2011, Alonso 2019 and 2020. Neither of them opted for a GP2 test in their preparations. But why? Well, it's simply down to the rules. When Schumacher was going through his return, 
There's new stricter rules around testing than there was in his first career. No testing could be completed outside of the allocated test days unless you're in a car that's at least two years old. With Mercedes being a new entry, they didn't have access to a car old enough. Kimi's return was aided with a January test in a 2010 Renault that was painted black to match the livery of the Lotus brand that had since bought a large stake of the team. And it was nice to get back in a car. Um, it's quite a few years than I have driven last time, so of course it takes a little while to get used to it. But I mean, the main driving, braking, turning, normal thing doesn't take many laps, but uh, of course start learning about the car and the team and uh, tires and everything, that will take a time. But uh, it was nice to, nice to get finally, finally back in Formula 1 car. Fernando Alonso took it even further in his return as he prepared for his 2021 season with Alpine. He tested the 2018 Renault. He completed a filming day with the current 2020 car, banking in 21 laps. Well, uh, most of the day I've been uh, a little bit of uh, filming and uh, shooting and uh, uh, some drones and on track and, uh, you know, it was uh, a little bit of action uh, on behind camera, but uh, at the same time, you know, we try with the team to put a couple of laps and, and for me to to find the comfort in terms of seat position, pedals, steering wheel, uh, things that, uh, you know, next year in winter is going to be very tight. So I think we did uh, these first uh, steps. After that, he completed a demo run in his title winning car at the last race of the season in Abu Dhabi. And then most famous of all, Alonso, nearing his 40s, then took part in the post-season Young Drivers Programme test. All this led to a successful return for Alonso, but how did Schumacher fare? Well, before the 2010 season started, the three-time race winner Johnny Herbert did share his concerns with Schumacher's return. It would be, it would be very interesting to see exactly what the Michael we see today compared to the Michael that we last saw in was it 2006 so it will be it will be very different for him because Michael's worth ethic was always testing at Fiorano analyze test at Fiorano analyze Grand Prix test at Fiorano and he just did that and it was just a complete and utter development he's only got February this time around there's nothing during the year so there's a lot of different things for him that he that 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 he he didn't have before, um, so it's going to be a little bit different for him. Maybe this is one of the reasons why Schumacher's return didn't go as well as his earlier career. He wasn't on the same level as his teammate Nico Rosberg, and he made a few errors that wasn't there before. Schumacher himself did raise his dislike to the new testing rules, but no matter how Schumacher did in his return, it was safe in the knowledge that what he achieved in his first career, he will always be remembered as a legend. If you found this video interesting and for more videos on Michael Schumacher, feel free to subscribe.